Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and today we're going to build a hammer. Why, you might ask? Well, I don't think this one is going to be working anymore. Built this a couple years ago, finally kicked it for me. So, we're going to be using DAP's new product, Rapid Fuse, to build this. It's supposed to set in 30 minutes and be as hard as wood glue. So, we're going to see if that works out for us. So what I'm doing here is going through some materials. What I've got is some hard maple and some paduke. Paduke is that naturally occurring red wood that you see there. I use it on a lot of my cutting boards and it's got some cool figure and it goes really well in contrast with that hard maple. It's a dense hard wood so it should work well for this project. Here I'm ripping everything down to width. I believe it's about four and a quarter inches. That's just a rough dimension. I'll go back later and get it down to the final sizing I want. And I'm going to cut it to be a little bit over five inches on the head width. Uh, that's what I'm doing right here. Once I got everything cut down to size, I go ahead and take a Forrester bit in my drill press and cut some holes into the paduke. I center them on each side and this is going to be the holes where I add the weights for the dead blow. I'm going to cut the sides in half uh, using a two degree taper on the table saw with my miter gauge. Now it's time to apply the glue for the first stage. Here I'm just going to glue the tapered inside edges down so that the wide part would be at the top and the narrow part would be at the bottom. I have both sides matching with the same degree of taper and I'm just adding a little bit of the rapid fuse here and putting them in place and then I'm going to secure them down with some clamps and let them sit for a half hour. After I've let that dry for about 30 minutes, I remove the top block, which was just acting as a plate in order to get some even clamping pressure. And then I'm going to add the BBs. These are just BB gun BBs that I bought at the local tractor supply. By the way, that's where rules, I love it. And um, what these are gonna do is add some weight to the hammer and give it that dead blow action so that the beads absorb the blow when you hit something and the hammer doesn't bounce all over the place on you. This is a common method for building dead blow wooden hammers uh, and you can find plans all over the internet for them. While that dries, let's make the handle. So here I am cutting down some stock two inch and a half by an inch and a half square. What I'm gonna do after that is create the tenon for the top. Um, essentially, I'm just cutting a smaller square um, and then I'm gonna square the cheeks up with a chisel. The technique I'm using here is kind of a hybrid. What I'm gonna do is score them on the table saw and give myself some marking lines and then take my miter gauge and just use the regular saw blade as a dado blade. Now would it be easier to use a dado blade? Yes. Did I feel like changing it? No. So I did it this way. You're going to see I lay down the stock and then just run it over the saw blade until I, uh, until I get to the cheek on where I want it on each side. After that I'll take it to the chisel. So here I'm using my stationary clamping system that Rockwell sent me to chisel out the cheeks. I'm essentially just making sure they're flat and then I'm test fitting it with the head. And once I get a nice snug fit, I'm going to go ahead and start shaping the handle.
here I'm cutting myself some slits in order to put wedges in the top of the head. That way it stays nice and firm in place as I insert the tenon. In this part, I am uh, shaping the handle. I'm just cutting off some stock uh, a little bit at a time in order to get it down to a rough shape in which I can go over with the grinder and the flap disc and really start shaping the handle to what I want. You could turn this on the lathe if you have one, but I don't, so I'm going about it this way. So here I got the flap disc on my grinder and what I'm doing is just shaping down the handle. I'm just going to keep going until I get a nice shape that I like and enjoy holding in my hand and after that I'm going to start the smoothing process. After the handle's down in rough shape, I take a band of 80 grit and start really smoothing it out. You can see here that it's not something that I particularly take my time with. I just get it to where it feels good in my hand and then I go back with some 120 and 220 grit with the grain in order to get it nice and finished. Once the headstock is out of the clamps, I get it down to its final dimensions on the table saw. You can do this beforehand, but I was lazy and wanted to do it like this. Um, so what I'm doing here is just taking some measurements, making sure both sides are even, moving the saw blade over, and cutting it down the sides. I'll also square all the faces and make sure they're nice and clean. That way, once I go over to the sanding, all i got to do is round the edges. I'm also going to put a 2 degree taper on the front of the faces that you'll be hammering with on the hammer. Um, this is recommended, it's not absolutely necessary, and I will be using the miter gauge to do that. Here I'm using the rapid fuse again to set the handle into the head of the hammer. Um, I'm just putting it on all the surfaces and it doesn't say that you have to spread it around like wood glue so I basically just hammer it on in there and make sure it's nice and snug and then I and put the wedges in the top with some more glue and let it sit for a half hour. After that sets, I trim the top flush on the bandsaw and then take it over to my orbital sander, which I don't think I videotaped, and flush it up. That gives you a nice smooth top and gives you that look that you're going for with the wedges splitting the maple. With a little bit of sandpaper, I go ahead and do some final sanding. Now this is a hammer, so it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, at least for my purposes. So here I'm using 120 grit. Quick singe with the brand, just to add my personal touch to it, and then a little bit more sanding to smooth that out. I'm finishing the hammer with some Danish oil, just because I had it laying around and I absolutely never use it. Um, you could probably use anything from spray polyurethane to lacquer to wax to 
tongue oil or linseed oil, whatever you prefer or have laying around. It's a hammer for the shop, so don't have to really worry about the finish in my personal opinion. So this is what I had and this is what I used. Now for a little bit of testing, I'm basically just taking the hammer and whacking it on hard stuff to see if I can split the seams. Now I could crack this in half if I really wanted to, but I could probably do that with any wood and snap the handle uh, if I was just hammering away on the piece of wood. But the hammer seems to hold up well. I'm not really feeling a lot of bounce. I'm getting it has great weight and some good balance, and it works really well with the chisel here. Um, I'm gonna flip it on the side and hit it some more with the chisel, and then I even go ahead and nail in some nails, which I would never use a wooden hammer for. But it works well, and because I use the end grain on the ends of the hammer head, it does not very really damage the edges there. So it ends up working pretty good. So I have to say I'm pretty impressed with this product. It dries very quickly as it's stated on the labeling and it has some good hold. Uh, I, as you saw, I was smacking on a 50 pound weight with it. Uh, I wasn't going to destroy it. Obviously I, I could break this any wooden mallet over a dumbbell if I wanted to. So, <clears throat> but none of the seams came apart. Um, did a little chiseling. I mean, the hammer worked great. It's pretty heavy. Uh, obviously I made it obnoxiously large because that's how I am. Uh, the seams are not splitting. Everything seems to be holding together pretty well. Uh, as I continue to use this, I guess I can update this review. Um, I think the product is exactly what it's stated to be. Um, I personally think that the working time is a little bit too short. It, it's tough when you're used to wood, working with wood glue. Uh, that is the one setback for me, but it does have longer working time than CA glue. And it's pretty comparable to a like five minute epoxy uh, type of work time. The other thing is you don't want to get this on your hands. I got this on my hands while I was working with it and it was a little bit difficult to get off. Uh, that being said, it does state to not get it on your hands and wear gloves. So that's my fault, but being a woodworker and someone who works with wood glue all the time, obviously you spread a lot of glue with your hands uh, and so that was just me being more habitual towards my process. Uh, I would highly recommend trying the product out, especially for something uh, that's more craft oriented. The You don't need a ton of the glue, you don't need a long set time, and you don't need it you should use clamps, but you don't necessarily need it. Uh, I'm really impressed with how it's holding up for this small project here, and I'm looking forward to using it more in the future. I want to thank DAP for sending this over to me and let me test run it real quick, and I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in to view this. If you like this kind of stuff, I'm going to be doing more tool reviews, I'm going to be doing more uh, product reviews as well, and feel free to uh, subscribe. I like how I just went through that entire thing and then screwed up that part, but please subscribe, please share, and uh, please like. I do this for you guys. I'm here to try to give as much information and as much feedback as I possibly can as a woodworker and as a furniture maker to help put you guys in the best position possible to go out there and make good products. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki and this is another quick tip. When you're sanding any surface, you want to go ahead and 